Sports NTV. Hello, good afternoon viewers. It is again another very interesting Sunday afternoon where we have a very, very interesting topic which I'm quite sure is touching almost all of us Ugandans who have dreamt of joining the business world or who have already have a foot within the world of business. Now, what we are tackling today is, um, of course, you're looking at that theme on the on, the, on, on your screens. We're looking at growing a retail business into an established wholesale operation with other associated businesses. Now, we have a modus operandi on this show. We don't want to talk you know, about these things from the point of view of theory. We want people who are actually doing business, you know, coming before us and sharing with us the experiences so that we can get good um, ideas or grounding on what it really takes to sit in these spaces. Now, again, as a way of beginning, I know that a number of Ugandans have in one way or another, where at a certain point in time, you know, begun at the point of retail. In fact, numbers or several studies have showed that most Ugandan businesses actually collapse. Uh, is it before their first birthday or second birthday? Generally, the mortality rate for business in Uganda remains high. And if you look at that stat those statistics, you'll find that a bulk of them are actually businesses that sit within what you'd call the retail space. Now, making that leap from that to a wholesale operation and probably stretching it to other operations is a huge, huge task. And that's what we'll try to unpack this evening and more. Now, join me in welcoming uh, Mr. Ronald Mukasa from uh, Enterprise Uganda. Ronald, you're most welcome to the show. Uh, thanks a lot, Charles. I'm very excited to be here. I think it's my first time this year, so I'm very excited <laughs> uh, to be back. I want to welcome the viewers and yep. to thank you for taking off time to join us today. It's such an honor to have you. Uh, our businesses are recovering. We are glad that the economy has uh, opened up further. Mm -hmm. But it's still a tough journey. It's yeah. still a tough journey. So at Enterprise Uganda, we are keen to help the businesses in this journey of recovery. And for those of you who are running the businesses, keep pushing. You are the people who make this happen. So we are very excited that you're joining us today. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Now, we have uh, our entrepreneur, our visitor today, uh, the businessman, mm -hmm. Alex Bale. Alex Bale has a very interesting story because he started as a retail operator mm -hmm. and then graduated into wholesale and other businesses. We're going to hear from him. Alex, you must welcome to the show. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, first, I want to thank the, the sponsor of this show, mm -hmm. Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development and Enterprise Uganda. Mm -hmm for giving us, with the, with the younger entrepreneurs, the opportunity to come and, and, and show mm. the experiences. Mm. Share those experiences. Share mm. those experiences mm. in different business field. I hear you. Secondary, I thank you, the moderator, Mr. Charles Boji, for hosting me today and Mr. Mukasa, mm. who is our coach, mm -hmm. to be here to direct us and guide us mm -hmm. into business directions. Thank you very much. Very good, very good. Now, we're going to get back to uh, Alex, because you're the most important mm -hmm. uh, part. You're the fulcrum of this show. Mm -hmm. um, we want to know, and I'm sure a number of our viewers are burning to hear your story. Mm. Because we've just given a bit of a preamble on that. Mm. Uh, but before we go there, um, I'm going to tell my producer to play for us a little uh, video, a montage, which is going to give you a digest of who Alex is. And then after that, we're going to find out how he began and how he has managed to transition from retail to wholesale and other business operations. Um, but maybe before I go there, 
I don't know. Uh, Ronald, you can give us what touched you, because mm -hmm. I know some of our viewers might want to get mm -hmm. to speed about what's happening in the world of business. What really yeah. touched you this week? Yeah, I think, I think, I think uh, uh, I'm very excited about this show, particularly because of uh, the topic which we are discussing today. Mm -hmm. uh, are there are businesses where a few people get in. There are businesses where so many people get it. And I think retail is that kind of business. That's right. Uh, as you rightly mentioned in your intro, mm. most of us, when you think about business, you say, what can I quickly start? Yeah. You're saying, you know what, let me start a boutique and sell some clothes. Let yeah. me start a retail shop. Mm -hmm. So there is no shortage of people entering into this business. Mm. And uh, clearly we see that uh, it's a very challenging journey. It's mm. one of the businesses where you quickly notice that uh, uh, you can sit a whole day in a retail shop and make a profit of only 20,000 shillings. Mm -hmm. And uh, then at the end, you may reward yourself with uh, some of the products you are selling <laughs> so that you can, <laughs> so that you can, you, you can at least recover from this tough <laughs> day. But the point is that it's a very complex business, right? It, is. it runs very small margins. Yes. The margins, it, especially. It is, uh, it's a business which is usually leaning a lot towards discipline yeah everything you need to be disciplined yeah uh, if you lose a box of soap mm. you are possibly lost all the profits of that consignment mm. so you if not profit for the month if not profit for the month mm. so those are the questions which i think i hope that as we go through today we can uh, and i'm very excited that alex is here to kind of share this because this is a journey which he has walked mm -hmm. it is such a complex journey how do you grow that business yeah. we see that some people will keep in the business but the business remains the same yeah. the shop remains clearly the way it was mm. before we don't see a second one open mm. we don't see expansion even within that one so it is one of those uh, and i hope that as we go through the show today we can delicately a kind of tease out how do we walk that journey beautiful beautiful mm. so at this moment uh viewers we're going to look at that uh, short montage to get a digest of what alex does i'm Bali alex B. i'm an entrepreneur a businessman a family man i'm also a social worker by profession I learn a number of businesses. Um, I learn a, a, a retail shop. Um, I learn also a wholesale shop uh, with three mobile money branches, all located in Namasuba. And a Procero Investment Limited. Uh, d during my um, S6 VAC, that is uh, 2000, two, 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 2008. Uh, I realized that my aunt had a, a vacant room, but the struggle was to convince her uh, to give me that room. I convinced her and he accepted it to give me the room, but he insisted that she won't give me capital. I recall that we had uh, uh, a, blocked, a broken fridge uh, in our garage. I requested uh, one of my friends, uh, who is a technician, uh, to prepare for me uh, that fridge. Uh, uh, luck enough, uh, the fridge worked, but with time, it did not meet the expectation. So I was, um, I was worried, uh, staring at the empty room that was given by my aunt. So every day I could, I could go uh, and open my room, uh, looking at uh, uh, my fridge and, and the weighing scale. Um, I almost developed pressure. It started as a small shop, a small retail shop in 2008, two weeks uh, joining my university. Uh, Natandika business say Nanchinga. So business say Natanko Jijanga Muchi, Saint Later, Naji transfer Linga, in Namasuba Katikalently, Wadi. Begin to have funding in Namasuba, Wario program your government, the Vita Youth Fund. Ningenda, Napla Inga, Nefuna loan, million Bidi, Jinanga or Kungra Mu business say Angi. Katina business in Nanchinga, Nani business say no. Nintaniko kuzainisa sainte hizo, hizo business. 
a Mirundi Vidi. Tanya and a collecting at his saint, and collecting a name, knowing an English into a Shamu Mubunji, then a dividing a chin products. The center is another Nakura, Nazonga Machim, or the Nakura, Nagoga Machim, more business. Um, so criteria one of the, the criteria they needed to, to, to get that youth fund was to have a certificate with Enterprise Uganda. <coughs> so in attending a workshop, uh, Nafuna Emisomu Minji, uh, Okuzimba business, Okuchusa, the way I, I look at the things, uh, how, do, how, how, how to manage business, how to get good stuff, and how to actively involve in your business. Mm? Then, mobile money was a jirao. Nintendika mobile money, Mukusoka, and a soccer never agent line from my friend, and with time, uh, Nakola Company, Air Process Investment Limited. Kubanga uh, requirement to kuwa mobile man hotel kubanga ina company. Mm -hmm. So ne ne mfuna ne mfuna ne ngazua ne ngazua ne ngazua. Ah, uh, kubanga na banali banali kuzi business ni njia njonga management ya fusi chizi bwenyo. So ne impali dzibwa ah uh, oku selling off uh, na chinga business. Sente na sente zaji na jitu nda ne kula mustoa ne kula mustoa, which later turned into. Uh, a small horror cell. Hmm? Small horror cell, they get angry, pull out, they get angry, pull out, they get angry, Then, ah, COVID we are jira. COVID we are jira. To our class, sent a new new. To our class, super abnormal profits. Ne tu ne ne tu ne ne tu vaje tu ali ne tu jaku main load. One way tuli kakati. Ah, uh, with time, another bank business a gets a gets a new. Ah. Uh, Ne 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 nganeta ga okuinvolving am ICT uh, walowa mukwano guange guenafuna na 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 installing ICT in the business kaka tibu yangu saka tii anyambe ukole bintu bingi solo kumane jinga stocko guange solo kula ba magoba guange kuzo buri kana ku maniwa kastoma guange solo anoku monta linga ba field officers so uh, please pawa nzetu kuzo sa uh, of course uh, nyingi. Uh, to file in your cover, customer buffet, customer complaint. Customer better than a complaint uh, to 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 the taking a netu lava in teaching is which I would have put in a chair in Tiba staff to our to our day off at least every every week. Bully staff are one are in a day off uh, so far in all our business. We have um, uh, over 14 staff that are. Uh, that are uh, doing different activities. Achievements, there are, there are so many achievements. Like soccer, uh, the, the business have, uh, has grown, as you, as you can see. Uh, it's the leading wholesale uh, store on Ontebe Road. Um, we have acquired vehicles, uh, tukutuku. Mm, uh, we have brought plots of land. Mm. Of course, um, as a person, uh, I can look after my family very well. Uh, I have two kids. Uh, they are they, they are they are schooling at. Uh, I can say one of the best schools in Uganda. Mm -hmm. I established a business for my wife. Now she is financially independent. Uh, of course, there are, there are several challenges. Uh, but first, uh, as you can see, uh, the store is full. Uh, we need to get another store where you can put more, more, uh, more, more stock. Uh, future plan is a Tulina, uh, of course, in Nijinyo. Nay, Okso Keradara. Tuagara Tungere ku, 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 ku market. Tuagara Tungere ku market. Tuagara Okuzimba Demonstration School uh, for Udu B Young Entrepreneurs in the future. So that is so Yamba Kubana, Kuba Chizuka Chiduo, Cha uh, unemployment. So Kati, um, a chin to Cha Demonstration School, uh, to Chukozeko, um, Tomazo, Tomazo, Okugula, Okugula, Etakayacho, Okula Kunsonge. Um, future plan to Arakuba by leading a supplier, um, to Arakuba by leading a supplier, Murijo Nieno. Welcome back viewers and uh, welcome back. Sorry about that. You've heard, that is Alex Bali's story. He's uh, an entrepreneur, a young man, a youth for that matter, 
he began small in a retail operation and he now runs one of the biggest wholesale operations along Entebbe Road, as you've heard. And what really caught my attention is the fact that he's been able to create tens of jobs out of this operation. You're talking about over 40 people employed, and you've had the plans. Is uh, talking about expanding into other areas and spaces. I don't know, um, Ronald. What are your quick, you know, take homes from there before I come to mm -hmm. Alex here to really tell us in detail to mm -hmm. give context to some of the issues he raised there. Now, yeah. maybe before you come in, uh, viewers, we're going to have it's a special show, so we're going to have a bit of a mix mm -hmm. between Luganda and uh, mm -hmm. English, mm -hmm. uh, so that you know everyone you know can rhyme well with the issues that we are raising. Mm -hmm. Yes, Ronald. Uh, yeah, thanks, th uh, thanks, Charles. For uh, I think when uh, as you watch and uh, us watching uh, Alexis' journey, what is clear is that it is the typical journey of a Ugandan entrepreneur. Mm. Uh, most Ugandan entrepreneurs will start small. Will yeah. start small. People don't have the access to big amounts of capital when yes. they are starting. Yes. So they will start small. Mm. They will start with a fridge, they will start with uh, a family member who gives you a chance, mm. like Alexis' auntie did. An angel investor. And, uh, those are the angel investors in Uganda. Mm. The, that family member who gives you that chance to mm. be able to start. Yeah. Say there is a room here, you start. Yeah. And usually that starting uh, kind of environment is very hazy. Yeah. It is hazy, it is uncertain. Mm. Uh, you don't have the resources, you don't have the experience, you don't have the support structure which will help you. Mm. But I think what is key, the lesson there is to start. Mm. Start where you are. I think that is something which Alex epitomizes. The fact that he started where he was. He was in a 6 vac mm. uh, And uh, young people who are in a 6 vac who are on campus, they, they totally understand that uh, Alex's reality is their reality. Mm. Currently, mm. They, 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 uh, they, they can look around and they say, actually, I don't have anything. And yeah. it could be just someone who gives you space outside their house that, okay, you do something here. You, uh, you, that starting small, I think, is a key it's message. It's a key message. And I think, as you say that, because we live in very unique times, mm. you know, we could be talking about campus students, mm. but given what COVID has seen us through, exactly, we are, someone was saying, in a mode of reboot. Mm. There are many people who are starting again exactly, exactly. and are trying in areas they had never even thought about yes. because of the realities and circumstances that push mm. them there. Mm. You can go on. You no, know, yeah. I, I totally agree with you. And, and this, re the, I mean, you, uh, the viewer watching this may quickly say, actually, for me, I'm 40, but yeah. I'm also starting again. Yeah. I'm starting afresh. Yeah. And it's okay. Mm. It's okay. At Enterprise Uganda, one of the things which we keep talking about yeah. is that start where you are wow. mm. start where you are if you are caught up somewhere in the serere start there if you are caught up somewhere in uh, chenjojo start mm. there if you are caught up somewhere in zombo start there mm. start where you are with what you have yeah. it is such a powerful message and yeah. i think that's something we see clearly mm. but then also this process of saying that we are continuously going to improve it means you finish and you move. Yeah. You finish and you move. Mm -hmm. It means that you start where you are, but constantly you are keeping to add. It means that you don't get stuck yes. in one place. And mm -hmm. I think Alex's story, as we watched, showed clearly that he's a man who is on the move. Mm -hmm. Even today, he has aspirations yeah. to move to the next level. Mm -hmm. So start where you are, but keep moving. But then I thought a third one, uh, just before <coughs> we go on, is this question of COVID. Yeah. Alex says his expansion happened during <laughs> COVID, which is That's a bit right. fascinating, yes. given that a number of people were struggling yes. during COVID. And, that and, and men are blaming their issues yes, yes, on yes. COVID. Mm. But we see that there are businesses which actually blossomed mm. yeah. during COVID. And mm. it's an interesting conversation. I hope we'll go a bit deeper into it yeah. as we run through the show. But that's another lesson, that you. even in the worst of times, mm. it might be a big opportunity for Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Mm. I hear you. That's good. Alex, let me come to you. Um, you know, to start, and, and, and uh, Ronald raises a very important point, which is actually the, it's like the theme, the tagline for Enterprise Uganda, mm. start where you are. Mm. And, and I want you to tell us what was going into your mind, you know, every time you'd open that room which your aunt gave you, and you'd see your empty shelves and a fridge there in a corner, and you're trying to figure out how do I start or I will start? What kept you going? Because many people actually fail at that point. Mm. Making that decision and say, you know what? Mm. 
now is the time let me start mm. what drove you chichichi cha kuyamba ko kubera ngo sigala kumulama ngo tambula okay uh, in 2004 uh, i was in s3 uh, my uncle uh, failed to meet the my school expectation mm. because of some family issues. Yeah. Then my sister came in to, to, to help me. But she told me that she would pay my school fees mm -hmm. up to A6. So uh, this worried me of how I would go to university. on how I will go to university. Mm. So it touched me and uh, I was like, if I get an opportunity to do something, I will do it. Okay. And as inspiration was uh, driven from the, from the ladies, I saw very early in the morning around uh, 5 p.m. Mm, 5, mm? 5 there. Mm. Yes. Mm. Mm. You know, with their baskets, Lashing to go to different markets in Kampara. Mm -hmm. It really touched me mm -hmm. and encouraged me. And I said, if these ladies can do something, why even me I can do something. Something. Mm -hmm. And as an inspiration was from uh, when I was in S5 at Old Kampara. I used to find some of my friends driving. When I, when, when I connected, when I contacted them, they, they said they have businesses. Mm. Really, it surprised me because my, at my former school, I didn't see any student driving. driving a car. So I said, ah. <laughs> <laughs> at this stage, these students are driving. Yeah. So those are some of the factors that really motivated you motivated and kept you, you. going. Hmm? Mm. That's why in S, S5, when I got that opportunity, when I came to know, that my aunt had a vacant room mm. in his estate. Mm. I used that chance. It wasn't. It, it, it wasn't very easy. You had to lobby to to, to, to convince her mm. because that room was meant for a state office. Okay. But I convinced her, and she accepted. Mm. Even giving even giving me capital to start, it wasn't easy mm. because I told her because she told me initially. That I'll give you that room, but I won't give you capital to start. You should look for other family members to give you the capital what? to start. start. Mm. Yes. But I convinced her that there is someone who told me that if I get a place, I if you fix for me mm. uh, the stores mm. and the counter, I'll be able to give you the, what? the capital to start. Mm. With th with, with th anyway, it didn't happen. <laughs> it didn't happen. So, my, got, my aunt got concerned that w and asked why I was not starting. Mm -hmm. I told her the person who promised me the capital failed. First, she filmed, but later she gave me that one million, which I used to start what? The business. The business, the business started as a small retail shop in Nyanama. Mm. Mm? Mm. Just two weeks to to join my university. You know, that's often there and Yes. There. Mm. Mm. But uh, just one month to my graduation, my aunt got uh, a problem in the UK. Okay. Mm. And uh, some of my family members wanted to, to take their business. To evict you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because they said <laughs> that uh, it, is, it is how who gave me the what? The capital to start. Yes. Then my, my mom intervened. Oh, so it wasn't even just a victim. They wanted yes. to take <laughs> everything. <Yeah. laughs> mm. My mom uh, intervened and I was allowed to, to take, to take uh, my business somewhere. That's why I shifted it to, to Namasuba. But you. before that, that situation, 
uh, forced me to start another business in Nanchinga. Mm. But uh, yeah, when you worried this one, yeah, when, when, yeah, yes, mm. when I worried that this this one might they might mm. take it. You saw it coming. And yes, mm. that's when I got a, a youth fund. Hmm? Mm. You know, which helped me to you know to stock the other new the, the other new shop. Mm. Mm. I get you. Yes. So that's how you began. Yes. Now, um, tell us something, because uh, now I want us to get to the guest, yeah. uh, which is now managing a retail mm -hmm. business, mm -hmm. especially because most retail business operations start with very little capital. Yes. And those who really make it are those who master the discipline yes. of surviving on extremely small margins, like Ronald said. Mm -hmm. So share with us, what are some of the things that helped you to build this enterprise into fast a fairly you know operational and good retail business at that point mm -hmm. because she only gave you one million yes and one million may not be a lot yes of money mm -hmm. so how do you now start to grow that one million to a point that even family members are struggling to say this business stays <laughs> take it <laughs> first uh, the loan that I, I got, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it helped me to uh, to expand. Mm -hmm. You know, from okay. the, one, the one million that you had. Yeah, from the one million, mm -hmm. and I paid it very well. Mm -hmm. When I finished it, uh, the b the bank called me again that Alex, you come for another what? Another loan because, because you, you serviced well. this one very mm -hmm. very well. Mm -hmm. Also going for another what? Loan. Another loan of two million. Mm. Mm. Also paid it very well. Mm. Mm. Used it very well to expand. Another thing that kept me going is uh, I live a normal life. Okay. I'm not a, I'm not extravagant. I hear. You. I have uh, a very small sizable family, just two kids. And I delayed it to produce because at that point the situation I was in it wasn't it wasn't good. So I delayed producing. It wasn't enabling. Problem. Yes, because uh, I was in two rooms. Yeah. Mm? In front it's the business. Mm. Then the backside we are sleeping there. Mm -hmm. So I was like producing a kid within this setup. Uh, this setup mm. really it won't make sense. Yeah. So I delayed mm. until when. The business grown with some good capital and the money. Then that's when I shifted. That's when I started the you know even uh, getting getting staff mm. Mm? and even bringing in my 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 elder brother. Okay. Now is the is, is the one managing that little shop. Mm. Every every entity that you, uh, that you, you have seen in the in the video, uh, in the video mm. it has the manager. For me. Uh, my role is to supervise them, how they are doing these mm. things. Mm. Of course, uh, for the case of the retail shop, you, you saw in the video, mm. we have a system that's managing. I uh, you know how much they have made per day, uh, the cost, uh, the suppliers who are demanding us. So I can, I, I can know the general status. Mm of the business at a particular at a particular day. Okay. Same would applies to the wholesale. Mm. Now I'm here. But they are working. Mm. Mm? They are working. I get you. Mm. Mm. When just hold it there. Mm. Uh, and I want to bring you in uh, Ronald mm. here. Mm. Because after that we'll be talking about your customer, the way you handle your customers. Mm. But what are your quick thoughts on that? Yeah, I think I think there there, 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 are, there are a couple of powerful messages which are coming through from what Alex has shared. Yes, uh, and, and, and in, in, a, in a in a very subtle way, uh, the first one is uh, how to work with financial institutions, and I know we'll get to it uh, yeah. a moment. Yeah. But this whole process of getting one loan, managing it well, and getting another and getting another. So if you have ever been in a financial institution and it hasn't called you back yeah. to give you credit. It is feedback to you that <laughs> the first time we had a relationship <laughs> with you, you didn't do a very good job. From so uh, we hear a number of people saying that banks, they are very bad. But it, you have to ask yourself, but two of you sat, mm. you signed an agreement. Mm. How did you behave with that agreement? Yeah. If you behaved a certain way, chances are very high yeah. that 
the bank is the one which is looking for you. I suspect the loans which he got subsequently, or which he has now, are not youth fund loans. Yeah. It may have been one of the, 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 the facilities when he was starting, but now he has grown to bigger loans. But remember that the financial institution wants to develop a relationship with you. So I, I think we'll talk about it in more detail yeah. a bit later. Yeah. But that's, that's a key message. Mm -hmm. The second one is the person. I feel like when you are at the retail stage, when the shop is still that strong, yeah. the biggest risk to the business is you. Mm. You are the biggest risk. Alex says that he wasn't extravagant. It is critical to notice how important that is. Y you are the one who needs to hold yourself back from eating the capital of the business. <laughs> and yet you can decide to eat it in one day. So when the business is one million mm. and you have sold a full day and you have only made 30,000, yeah. it is you to decide to say that I am going to only spend 5,000 of this money on myself mm. so that 25 can go back into the business. Yeah. And that process has to be done again and again when the business is young. Mm. The day you, I mean, Alex talked about not having children quickly, but when the child is sick and you come and take 200 out of the business, that's capital of the business. That's right. And you have to know that one, one has to give. Mm. The child may recover, but the business will struggle. Mm. So those are the questions. You need to understand that when the business is young, you the entrepreneur, you the person who has started the business, you are the one who you need to control most. Mm. Your fi personal financial behaviors are very critical at that point true, true, because true. you are the one who ensures that business remains safe yeah. you are the one who protects the business from your relatives yeah. if you don't protect the business from them they will come and sit outside your shop mm -hmm. say that alex you give us a, a bottle of soda mm -hmm. you, that soda is there in the fridge mm -hmm. so alex is the one who has to say that ah no you know what this is capital mm -hmm. i can buy for you for one thousand from my man mm -hmm. but i can't buy for the ten of you yeah. the point is that it's if we don't do that, yeah. when the business is young, there is no way it can be able to grow organically. And I feel like the third message which came through uh, is this: the role of technology. Yeah. I was very excited to see that Alex has chosen to use technology because technology is an enabler. Mm. It allows him possibly to look at his phone and know what sales have happened at one of his outlets. Yeah. And he's seated right here. He can be able to say, this is below what we got yesterday. I need to do something here. Mm -hmm. That process, and I think uh, as Ugandan businesses, we need to ask ourselves, how do we incorporate technology yeah. at the level of record keeping, mm -hmm. at the level of security, at the level of decision making? Technology is a win. It helps you win as a business. And as the business expands, it is the partner who you need to work with. Alex talked straight that I see the system. I know the system. And that word is a word. Most people, when they are, if they were to be here for the show, mm. they have to close the shop. That's you right. put a padlock on it and you what? Mm. And you close it. Mm. And the moment that happens, the business can't grow. Mm. But the point is that systems are important. Then I think another thing we'll touch on is how to work with family members. Yeah. Because many people keep saying, I, uh, family members, sometimes they can't be trusted. But the point is that the family member chief shifts from being a family member to an employee of your business. Mm. Now, how you work with that family member to make sure you are winning in business is important. Because it's usually the person who you know most, you don't have to vet him. You know where he grew up, you, you, he's, you are in the same house with him. Mm. But how do you convert him into a good employee who can be able to give value? to your business. I think I, th I feel like those are a couple of the messages which 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 come through. And certainly the message of resilience. Yes. The fact that you have to keep pressing. Hmm. There is something actually uh, w w which I think is important uh, just before I leave the point of family. Family members are your first angel investors. Hmm. They are the first people who put money into you. All of us in this community which we live as a country. Every time we're in trouble, you call your family members. Mm. They tell them, we have a sickness. How can we collect money? We have uh, a barrier. How do we collect money? We have a wedding. How do we collect money? We need to ask ourselves, how do we use that family energy as it worked for Alex yeah. to be able to capitalize businesses? Mm. Because it is this aunt who said, there is this young man who I'm uncertain whether they will run away with my money. Mm. But she planted a seed. Mm. So we need to see that as families, we start putting seeds into young people's businesses. Mm -hmm. As we put seeds into young people's businesses, in a way, we are creating an enterprise like the one Alex has, which could employ 40 mm -hmm. people, including your own one. And they the take away certain member. responsibilities from you. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Because Alex is an independent family member mm -hmm. who contributes to that family also. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that seed has to be planted. So if you are parent seated out there, you need to ask yourself, if I have my S6 vacist, 
my campus, my S4 Vakist, if they have something they do, am I going to plant a seed in them? Or am I going to stop them from going into that? Because sometimes when you stop them from going into that, you are denying yourself an opportunity of having an independent man or woman in the yeah. future. So it's important that we say, how do we use this family energy? Who are your angel investors? Who are the people who can take a gamble on you? Mm -hmm. that, how do we use it to be able to enable business? It's happening, but we need it to happen even more. Thank you, Ronald. And I think that's well put. Mm -hmm. Viewers, you can be part of this discussion. Uh, we're going to have numbers on the screen. Uh, it's a WhatsApp number, so you can send your question, comments, or suggestions. We, hearing the story of Alex Bale, mm -hmm. he's a businessman. He owns a retail shop, and at the same time, a wholesale shop, and a chain of other business operations. He began small. Where we began, just to give you a recap, is that most of us enter into business from a point of retail. Whether you have a uh, a boutique, whether you're running uh, uh, a little you know, retail operation in the neighborhood, or whether you're selling Bizigo uh, cosmetics, I mean, uh, you realize that most of us are at that point. So that's where we enter, and that's where most of us actually fail. Very few actually graduate to the next level, mm. the wholesale revo level. And from wholesale, mm. is of course, maybe Alex is nursing ambitions. One day he will mm. tell us mm. of, of being a producer of the goods mm. he's actually... Because not all of us can be manufacturers. That's another thing. Mm. Mm. Not all of us can be farmers. Mm. But retail, there are many of us probably, mm. by virtue of the mm. fact that it's the money we have, the capital we can mobilize, mm. many can enter into that space. Mm. But it's another thing to stay in that space and grow. Mm. So Alex, I want to move to the point of... Um, Customers, because in a retail shop, I would imagine that customer experience and mm. care is very, very important because you're dealing people at a personal level. Mm. Yeah. Um, first of all, how did you deal with it at the beginning, and how have you sustained it? Because I see, or I imagine, that is part and partial of your growth story. And again, how are you? spreading it to your employees now that are 40 plus okay uh, customers are very very important in the business mm. uh, they're among the five givers of wealth um, initially uh, <coughs> When I was working with my, my wife initially, of, co of course for her, uh, uh, I, had, I had to teach her how to handle people very well. Mm. Of course, mm. I told her, customers are the key. Mm. Without the customers, the business you, would You die. have no business. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we treat our customer very, very well, mm -hmm. you know. And the mo mo moreover, we also live within the same within locality, the so we can't treat our customer, you know, in, in a bad way. In a bad way. Now, uh, I know in retail you have sometimes scenarios of people who want to take items on credit, and sometimes they are very convincing. You actually look at the man or woman; mm -hmm. he will tell you, "I have nothing to eat or to feed my children with. I need a kilo of sugar. I need mm -hmm. a quarter kilo of posho, mm -hmm. and that kind of thing." How do you deal with that? How do you reconcile, you know, that? without losing this person, but at the same time not hurting your business, how do you make the right decision? Of course, uh, th that scenario is rampant in mm. this retail shop. Yes. Because uh, most of your customers are the people you know. Everyday guys. Uh, everyday guys, yes. you know. Yeah. <coughs> mm. um, of course, uh, you, you have to, to know your customer mm. eh, very well. That, that this person has the as the character of paying back. Mm. Mm. But sometimes, even if uh, someone may, ma, ma, might fail mm. to pay, mm. but, I like but, 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 but you call, yes. you, you call that, uh, that, that transaction, yes. that this person, uh, I know he has failed to pay. Mm. Okay, you can talk to him. Mm. Mm. Uh, maybe he can tell you that I had this issue, that's why I'm, I'm delaying to pay you. But when he fails, you leave it. Mm. You leave it. Of course, mm. there's nothing you can do. So the key is to look out for the character yes. mm. of the customer. Yes. Mm. I like because the choice of words. Because uh, mm. there is no uh, 
any businesses which has no which does not give credit, give credit. it's very difficult mm. even for us in the, uh, in the wholesale mm. they are giving us credit yes our suppliers they are giving us credit i get you yes mm. Mm. i think that's a beautiful one mm. so um then when it comes to because i know sometimes uh especially again at that level most people tend to go to so and so's shop they mm. say for us we buy from Mokasa's shop. Mm. But here you are, Alex. Maybe guys used to know you in this shop. Mm. And then today you're no longer there. They see different faces. Yeah. How do you manage to keep the people going, coming, even when you are away? And they know that they will get the same kind of service mm. that you give them from another person. This time your employees. Okay, thank you for that question. Mm. It's, it's very good. Um, with... Uh, with the system in place yes and uh, good staff I always take to, to my staff we always have uh, meetings mm. you know on a Sunday of course we sit mm. and we share different issues about the business mm. Mm. first uh, for me to get to, to, to get a staff I look at uh, the, the character of the person, mm -hmm. the passion, the passion. Yeah. Mm? But the most important thing is self-driven. Mm. I need someone who is self-driven. Mm. Mm? I don't want to, to have a staff. You tell him today uh, a certain thing, yes. and you tell him the same thing another day. Over and over again. That one, when I talk to you and you don't change, of course, you have to leave the business. Mm. So the people I have, they know what I want. Mm. Even if I'm not there, mm. they treat my customer very well. Yes. And most of my customers, they know they knows me because I've been with them for some good time. Mm. They have my number. If they experience any any malfunction in my be, of course they, they, they call me mm. that Alex, you have bought this new stuff, but it's not behaving well. You know. Then I go and interrogate what what really happened. What went wrong? Yeah. Mm. What what went wrong? Mm. So that's how I, I keep my customers, mm. and they keep coming back to my shop. And, and, and another thing, when uh, in the video, when you look at uh, my businesses, mm. they are very organized. Like initially, it. initially, uh, when I <coughs> initially before Enterprise Uganda, mm. the business was so disorganized, hmm? very disorganized. Yes. But after the the workshop. Uh, the workshop i learned so many things in enterprise uganda mm. how to to be organized how to to control a stage so wh when i went back i implemented those things i made sure that the business looks smart mm. things are visible mm. i do the, the, the way stage mm. and attractive to customer yes you come to my shop the environment is clean even if you buy something you really want to come back to, to come to back again. And I, again no i liked your display actually mm. looking at uh, mm. uh of course a number of uh, other retail shops and that mm. kind of thing mm. i think it's a good one mm. so um viewers we're going to pick alex's story from there um we're going to take a very short commercial break now when we come back uh, again keep sending those questions of course we'll continue with the journey of alex and most importantly the key lessons he learned from the experience and the opportunity the interface he had with enterprise uganda and how it helped shape his business journey where he sits today. We'll pick it from there after this very short commercial break. Hello viewers, welcome back. Uh, it's the Business X Ratio uh, brought to you by Enterprise Uganda, Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development. And today we're unpacking a very important topic which I believe is quite dear or close to many of us we're talking about transiting from retail to a wholesale operation or you could say how do you successfully run a retail enterprise and grow it into other meaningful business lines and probably at the end of the day success depending on how you define success now in the studio we have alex bali alex bali is a businessman uh, who began and still runs a retail operation but also along that he runs a wholesale operation and a chain of other businesses. He has ticked several boxes and he feels he's really sitting in a comfortable position, much as 
he still has quite a number of aspirations and boxes to tick. Mm -hmm. uh, again, we have Ronald Mukasa from Enterprise Uganda, uh, a coach, and is helping us digest and distill the issues as they come along. So, Ronald, what did you pick from uh, Alex's submission before we went for the break, especially in relation to dealing with staff, mm -hmm. uh, employees, mm -hmm. and uh, customers? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, I, think, I think Alex raises a couple of interesting ideas yeah. and which, uh, which, which, uh, which any entrepreneur out there, anyone running a business needs to kind of pay attention to. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, when you speak on the subject of uh, uh, being uh, the, the kind of stuff you are looking for, yeah. so it means that you find what you are looking for before you find a staff member. Mm -hmm. You want someone who is self-driven, you want someone who is uh, who who has character. You you need to have that list before you look for the staff member, mm -hmm. so that when you are looking for someone, you can be able to see that this person has these attributes. Yeah. So it means there has to be a list of the staff member you are looking for before you go out to look for staff. Mm -hmm. But you notice that in many of our businesses, it is the other way around. Yeah. The staff member arrives then you say, start saying, what are they going to do? <laughs> <laughs> so, so your, 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 your uncle calls you and he says, you know what, Alex, uh, there is a cousin of yours here. He has also his in S4. Mm. He, I'm sending him to your shop. You give him a job. Mm. Figure it out. Uh, figure it out. Mm. Now, that's the wrong way of doing it. Yeah. It means that the staff arrived and then you look for the attributes. The attributes have to be there before. Mm. So that's why in the corporate world, they will have they will put out an advert within a job description saying I need a person who is who is who these are the attributes. Mm -hmm. That is the process. But even in a small business, mm -hmm. even in a retail shop, even in a wholesale shop, mm -hmm. that process needs to be followed. Yeah. So that you know these are the kind of people I'm looking for mm -hmm. before you start the journey of finding the stuff. So it was an important message which came out from Alex's mm -hmm. submission. And I hope that the people who are watching us can be able to see it clearly. That you need to ask yourself. The person who I want to find as my member of staff, do I know that person before they arrive? Many times if you are running a business, you have 10 staff, and you look at the 10 staff you have, mm -hmm. you'll quickly notice none of them was hired by you deliberately. One of them was possibly your, your little brother who was at home, then you say, let's go together mm -hmm. and we, we go business. So that's your first member of staff. Mm -hmm. Then they sent you a couple of people. Then you met a friend who you are in school with. He said he has a son mm -hmm. who has nothing to do. He says, okay, you bring him. Or oh, a desperate <laughs> friend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. or, or a desperate friend. Mm -hmm. And when you look around, you quickly notice that of your 10, only two have been recruited because of what you're looking for. Yeah. The other eight were subjected to you. Now, if you're that kind of entrepreneur, you need to reflect from mm. this submission and say, am I going to keep these people? Mm. Because a business has a way it operates. Alex runs a, a retail and wholesale establishment. Mm. He has to make deliveries to customers. Mm. Yeah. What does that mean? Decision making is important. Yes. When a person is seated on that tuk-tuk yeah. and he sends materials to a retail shop, yes. he delivers them to a, a retail shop, mm. possibly some somewhere in Indeji. When that happens, you need someone who has, the, who, has the, who has the quick thinking to quickly say that when you arrive, you see whether the boxes of soap are still there. Mm. There is a new soap which we have. You tell that customer about it. When Alex talks about someone who is self-driven, that's the person you want. Mm. So that when that tuk-tuk gentleman comes back, he says, you know what, Alex, I delivered 10 boxes, but you give me another five mm. of this new soap. I convinced the client to what? To take it. That's the person you're looking for. So the, on stuff, that is key. Then when you look at also the ability to let go mm. of stuff, this firing thing is one of the most complex things. Mm. Some people have been in the process of firing one a member of staff for the last 10 years. <laughs> they have failed to fire the fellow. Mm. The fellow keeps coming, he's not performing, mm. but there's... And, and, and I don't know whether we picked it from Alex's submission. Alex said, when you don't meet the standard which we have set as a business, I will let you go. Mm. And why does he do that? He doesn't do it because he's a bad person. Yeah. He does it because if he doesn't do it for the business, the business won't grow. Yeah. So it is critical that we ask ourselves as business owners, mm. who do you need to fire? Mm. Sometimes the person to fire is in a complex position. Yeah. They, they are husbands and wives who have to fire one of them, uh, one of each, oh, yes. each other. Mm. One of them has to leave the business for mm. the business. And so th there, are, there are times when it is very complex. Mm. But sometimes it is your own son yeah. who needs to leave the business. Mm. 
and you need to tell him I'm still your father. Mm. But the truth is, we have to let you go. Yeah. Now you'll go home and have to deal with that reality mm. that you have fired your own son. <laughs> but the truth is that you need to ask yourself mm. who this because that business and you are two separate people. When mm. Alex was giving his introduction, he said. For me and my family, we are living well. Yeah. But he's talking about now Alex, the person. Yeah. But he also has Alex, the business owner. Mm. When he speaks as Alex, the business owner, he's speaking on behalf of the business. Mm. It means that he's making decisions for the business. So there are two things which you need to separate. I like the organized business. Yeah. The fact that really you are seated and watching TV mm. in your shop, but you are jumping over soap the sugar is right next to the shop. Mm. There are things which have arrived, they are still outside the shop, they haven't been organized. Why don't you every morning wake up and pick up all the things on the shelves and clean them with a cloth? Mm. Clean them with a cloth, so that, that dust gets off. Mm. That is the process which you need, that's customer service. Mm. So that by the time the customer says, you give me that kazigo mm. in the corner, mm. you don't bring it and it is full of a film of dirt on top of it, but it's clean. So customer service or customer care is beyond wide smiles. It's, it's not just smiling. Mm -hmm. It is when I touch that product, is this the product? I, some of you have things on your shelves that are expired. Mm -hmm. The thing has been there. You give me something. I think it is okay. But it expired mm -hmm. in October of last year. Mm -hmm. And you are the shop owner. Mm -hmm. How don't you remove expired things mm -hmm. from the what? From the, the shelves. shelves. Mm -hmm. Those are questions which need to be asked. And I think Alex brought them out quite well. Beautiful. And we saw the video. Yes. Anyway, the beauty of TV is that yes. you get an opportunity to be taken there. Exactly. Now, moving on, Alex. Um, a very important component of your business, the kind of business, are your suppliers. Very, very important. Very key. Share with us, how do you deal with your suppliers? How do you, you know, use the relationship you built with your suppliers? Or have you used the relationship you built with your suppliers over the years to also grow your business? Thank you for that question. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very, very, very important in the business. Uh, suppliers among the five givers of wealth. Suppliers are very keen in the business. When you treat them very well, you know, mm -hmm. everything becomes very easy. Uh, they give you uh, supplies on credit. On credit. On credit. I saw cartons of which, wheat plant and all that. Mm. Which are very, very, very important because I might not have um, all the monies to buy because there are so many things that are needed in the shop. I get you. For example, like a spring. Yeah? We get spring. That's the wheat flour. Yes. Mm. On credit. Worth 70 million. 70? Yes. Mm. Worth 70 million. Um, in, in initially, they, they were not giving us that, uh, mm. that amount. But the way we have been, you know, dealing with them, yes. you know, they trusted us. There are so many uh, suppliers in, uh, in learning to us because they, are, they have seen the way we are, we are doing businesses. Mm -hmm. you know? They come, they see the, the system, eh, the way we, we handle them, mm -hmm. they, they, they sign whatever transaction you know, uh, we make. They have to sign. They also see the kind of order yes, in this, an organization. Yes, the, the kind of the order, the system mm -hmm. we have. Mm -hmm. And some they come, ah, Alex, where did you get this system from? Mm -hmm. Because I, I can show them that ah, now we were, demand, we, are, we, are, we were demanding us this amount of money. You see, in the system we have, the other time we paid you this amount, mm -hmm. uh, now we, we are making this amount. Mm -hmm. So that ordinance, now they are coming, they are coming back to us. They, they are willing to, to give us more stock on credit. Mm -hmm. Yes. I get you. Mm -hmm. Now, um, another important component again is, because uh, you mentioned that at the beginning of your story, you know, how you also manage to benefit from some government programs like the Youth Livelihood yes. Fund. Right now, uh, there's a program for SMEs, you know, to help support them through the impact of COVID. Um, I know there are people, especially young people watching, including big people yes. as well. Like I said, we are in, re in reboot mode. Uh, many people have gone back now to the beginnings. They are yes, starting yes. afresh. Mm. If you can share with them tips of what it takes to actually qualify for this kind of support based on your experience, how you manage you know, to position okay. yourself 
to okay. actually meet the criteria because okay. there is always criteria. parameters. Yes. Yes. Mm. Thank you for that question. Uh, you know, <coughs> we need to change our attitude toward things. Mm. Initially, I told uh, before I got that youth fund, I mm. told uh, a friend that the, uh, this government program that's running on the TV, it's called uh, Youth Fund. Mm. Uh, can we Gandhi apply? I said, ah, those government think they don't, you know, they are not there, they are just lying. Mm. I, told, I told him, no, let's try. Hmm? For, for, for him, he refused. For me, yeah. I went. Mm -hmm. I went to, to, to ask, you know, more, more questions ab about how, how someone can, you know, can benefit. Mm -hmm. And really, it worked because, uh, because I had the business. One of the criteria was you have to first have that. The business. The business. Mm -hmm. Second, uh, the certifi certificate from Enterprise Uganda. Mm -hmm. At that time, I didn't have that, the certificate. certificate. But the bank gave me the money. Mm -hmm. And also referred to me to Enterprise Uganda to get that certificate. That's how I came to know Enterprise Uganda. At, and really, and getting a certificate yes. meant you had to sit in Ye class yes. and be trained. Yes, mm. Mm. and really helped me very much mm. because uh, Enterprise Uganda really played even now a very important role. You know, mm. whatever you know, good thing you you see in my enterprises, it's because of Enterprise Uganda. Mm. Uh, the first startup tour, the, fly, the, the high flyers, mm. you know. There are so many things to, to learn from them. Mm. Mm. Uh, the, the, the five pillars of yes. the business. Yes. Mm. Mm. The entrepreneur and the way he's managing things. Yes. Mm. The, the human resource, how do you handle human resource, mm. you know. Business operation, yes. how do you deliver things to customers, yes. you know. Marketing and the customer care, mm -hmm. very, very important. And how, and how, the way, how, how you deal with uh, financial institutions, mm -hmm. really. Mm -hmm. So, uh, guys out there, mm -hmm. don't hesitate to go and, you know, mm -hmm. process these government, you know, uh, opportunities. Mm -hmm. They are there, and you, you can get. Mm -hmm. So it's a matter of attitude change. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I hear you. Mm -hmm. I don't know. What you can speak to that, uh, Ronald, before you go to the yeah. questions. And I have to <laughs> warn that we have quite a number of questions. <laughs> there there are a number. Yes. Let me just quickly touch on a couple of things uh, I think which are important. I'll start with the suppliers. He talked about suppliers, and I think it is such a powerful message mm. to notice that one of the cheapest sources of capital is your supplier. Mm. Supplier credit is very cheap. Mm. He talked about Supreme. If Supreme brings you products yes. worth 70 million shillings, mm. in a way they have given you a loan mm. of 70 million shillings. And they are saying within two weeks, mm. sell this product. Mm. You may sell it at 70.72 million. Give me my 70, keep your 2 million of profit. Mm. Then I'll give you again mm. another loan of 70. Mm. Now, what would be the alternative? The alternative would be to go to a bank and borrow 70 million shillings. Okay. Then take it to Supreme and pay for the content. Mm. That process is much longer and much more painful. Because by the time the bank gives you 70 million, the documents you need to process yes. would be too many. Yeah, absolutely. But here is a lorry which comes and says, I have a very simple request for you. I put my product here. Mm. If I put my product here on Monday, after 14 days, I want you to give me my money after you have sold. Mm -hmm. And they won't start with 70. Mm -hmm. They may start with 1 million, mm -hmm. giving you product of 1 million. When you perform with 1 million, they give you 3. Mm -hmm. When you perform with 3, they give you 10. Mm -hmm. Now, if you are business out there and you don't have supplier credit, ask yourself, where, why don't my suppliers trust me? Mm -hmm. Exactly why, why are my suppliers shunning me? Did, you, did they give you product of 1 million once and you disappeared? Yeah. Or they came back, they don't see their product on the shelf, but you say you don't have money. Mm. So <laughs> where is my money? I, I left my product there on the shelf. Yes. Why isn't my money there? That's mm. really the question. Yeah. And you need to ask yourself, am I a loyal customer mm. to that supplier? Mm. That is the only way you grow from retail to wholesale. You need supplier credit, and supplier credit is the cheapest. Mm. Now, when you tell me about... Well, uh, the, the, the second bit we, when he talked about uh, government programs, I think it's mm. important to notice that the 
these most of these product programs like youth fund it mm -hmm. is just ignition mm -hmm. to give you a startup yeah. to give you a push and whichever government product will come it takes that behavior mm -hmm. it is to push you now alex is not looking for youth fund he's he's at he has the, the point is that it, it played its part now it's important to also do what i talked about when we talk about supplier credit mm -hmm. the fact that you have taken youth fund does not make it free money this money was offered through a bank the bank has a collection mechanism it is that collection mechanism which even showed him showed the bank that this is a good entrepreneur yep. and you can give him a bit of your own money yep. so the point is that only way these programs can work yes. is when you the entrepreneur mm -hmm. you appreciate that it is a business transaction like any other when we are in our trainings we talk about grants mm -hmm. we say that there are people who will give you a grant sometimes it's your own family member who gives you a grant mm -hmm. but when you get that grant do with it what you promised you go to your family member you tell them help me with 500,000 shillings I need to start mm -hmm. I need to start I really the person says okay I'm going to trust you mm. the moment they give you that 500,000 shillings they find on your whatsapp you at the beach with bottles <laughs> and enjoying yourself with their 500,000 they you say what did the business I say no <laughs> Ugandans are thieves no these Ugandans are not thieves you are the thief <laughs> the family member gave you this money mm. and you did not do what you promised to do mm. the same way the government will give you money and says that you push your business when you push it it's success mm. that the, the, and some of them if some programs in government are even grants yeah but the point is that we need to take the attitude that this is something which pushes me as the entrepreneur it is constantly move we usually say Marie Tambula. 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 Mm. Start, you move to the next mm. step the next step if we don't see that happening in your business it is a sign that as an entrepreneur you're not doing and the rules of business will push you out of business great thank you Ronald mm. and I think that's well put yes. I don't want to add a thing mm. now let's move to the questions mm. uh, of our entrepreneurs rather of our viewers mm. and I know a bulk of them are actually entrepreneurs mm. um, I have uh, innocent Monimpa this is from Kampala School of Public Speaking mm. <laughs> he's saying my question what can a young graduate with no aunt like Alex's aunt do uh, you're a graduate no capital no supportive relatives mm. I think Ron you can pick that very fast mm. Okay. Oh, so I, oh, you, I thought you were reading a couple. No, no, no. I, will, uh, I, I okay. want to read as we offload. Mm. No, I think, I think, I think innocent, innocent raises a good question. It is in, it's, it's possible that you look around and you say, I don't have where to start. Mm. Uh, for uh, uh, Alex could have made the same case. Mm. This is an aunt. It's not the father. It's not the mother. It is, it is, it's, it's, it's possible to say, I have nowhere to start. Mm. But the point is that if you are a young graduate, there are a couple of things which you need to ask what can i work with mm. first thing which you can work with is in which networks am i currently that i can be if you are in a hostel for example and you are saying you are starting you want to start a business in that hostel uh, as a young graduate or someone who is at campus if you're in that hostel the first people you need to ask can i start a laundry business for example with the 10 friends who I have mm -hmm. it they want to refuse to give you their clothes mm -hmm. to wash them and you start but you have to go you have to jump that handle mm -hmm. of being seen with Benson's washing other people's what clothes mm -hmm. if you can jump that handle you can be able to collect some 30,000 from them Good so thing. within your networks mm -hmm. what can you pick within your skill set mm -hmm. what can you pick the skills which you have is there anything which you can use to be able to earn the next shilling Beautiful. Mm. Now, um, moving on, I know you've touched some of these questions mm. in your submission, but just as a matter of emphasis, because they are on, very, very on important. On that issue mm. of, uh, of innocent Bonipa, yes. mm. uh, the most important thing is uh, you knowing what you want. Yeah. Mm? Uh, because <coughs> if it, it is capital, which is the most important thing, why, why is it that? There are so many people who come to me and say, we ha I have money, but I have uh, I, I don't I'm know what foolish. to do. Yeah, yeah, there are so many people come to That's me. True. If the if the capital was very very mm. quite important, mm. of course it's depend on the, the personality, the personality, what the, the person wants. Mm. I hear yes. you. Beautiful. <coughs> now I have uh, Regan Magombe from Bali. Um, he's saying hello, Charles. Thanks for the program. Let him tell us how much capital he started his business with. We'll emphasize that, mm. and what drove him to start that particular business. Secondly, is it to to make to just make money? Or to help the people? Uh, the first question, I started with one million. Mm. The, sec the second the question, second question mm. is um, 
what drove you into business? Of course, uh, uh, I talked in my, uh, my earlier submission, mm -hmm. I talked about uh, uh, my, my uncle mm -hmm. uh, failed to, to meet my school expression. That uh, you know, allows us, you know, mm -hmm. what will happen to me mm -hmm. when, when I will go to, to the university. Another thing, uh, when I was at the uh, Odi Kampala, seeing friends driving also you know mm. even the other issue of uh, uh women seeing them in the morning around five you know carrying different ba baskets going to different markets, markets. you know mm. also you know motivated me that in the future when i get any chance I also start what business yeah, and another another thing they desire to be independent for me i want to be independent mm. these things of you know relying on people i don't want it in my life Beautiful. that's that's why even i started the business for my wife i told her you i have you, i need you to be independent yes. don't 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 rely on me very much yes. what if i die what mm -hmm. happened mm -hmm. so now she's know how to do business she's making money even if i die she's able to look after my, my kids that's a very important one mm. uh ronald i have someone mm. asking where are the opportunities for financial lending with more minimal collateral mm. banks have a huge process i run a retail drug shop b peter kamwenge district mm. Yeah, I think I think I think I think I think that's a powerful that's a powerful statement. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you look at uh, the, the financing, yeah. you are right. When you go in the bank, it is usually a longer process because usually banks are using people's deposits mm -hmm. to lend out money. Yes. They need to secure it to a certain level. Mm -hmm. But if you run a, if you run a retail drug shop, we have talked about supplier credit. Mm -hmm. Ask if you have been going to this wholesale drug store. He said he's in uh, Kamug. Which town? Kamwenge. Eh? Kamwenge. Kamwenge. Mm. If you have been going to this big wholesale shop, mm. let's say in Fort Porto, yes. and you have been going there, you have gone there ten times. Mm. Every time you have come, you have come with five hundred to buy stock. You come to take to your retail drug shop. Mm. Can you develop a relationship with that drug store so that when you give them five hundred, they give you stock of one million, and say, "I will pay at the end of." That is supplier credit. That, that is a form of support which can be able to build your retail business mm -hmm. right now. And it's something which Alex spoke as, to. As the, yes. So I think it is, it's, it's a path which you can take. Mm -hmm. The other thing which you need to consider is to ask yourself, who is drawing more from the business? Yeah. Is the business keeping most of the profit or I am keeping most of the profit as an individual? Mm -hmm. Usually when a business is not, I, I, when you talk about uh, the pharmaceutical industry, yes. pharmacies are relatively profitable businesses yes. because it is a basic need and people need to buy those drugs. And people usually get good decent margins. Yeah. But if you find that the stock in your shop has kept at the same level, mm -hmm. it might be that you draw a bit more, like all the profit the profit hasn't yeah. allowed, you haven't allowed it to multiply inside mm. the business. Mm. So that's something which you may have to look You need to manage your appetite. Yes. Good. Uh, now I have Kisitu Aloysius. He's mm. from Mosanyusa. Mm. Oh, sorry, it's Kisitu Aloysius Mosanyusa. is from PG. He's saying starting small is very key to success. However, as a business, his business has not been able to break even. Mm. How can I deal with taxes? Because we are usually beaten by such issues. Our businesses go and recognize, especially if I'm looking at a scalable business. Mm. I think it's trying to look at the kind of odds that a business mm. goes through to make it. Yeah. So how do you break a business, even like a small business, mm. and then you make it? And I think these are some of the issues mm. that Alex spoke to. Yeah. Issue of discipline and mm. that kind of thing. I don't know whether there's something you want to add. I think, I think I'll, I'll speak to, to, to the issue of taxes. Taxes mm. is a very interesting topic. Mm. Because usually when you start, you start very small, and the taxman may not be able to see you. Yes. True. But as you grow, you inevitably will become visible. So there is a glass ceiling. Yes. And you need to make sure that you have gotten your books in order with the taxman mm. so that it doesn't. Don't forget that the taxman is not, the, the taxman's interest is to collect those taxes you are legally have to pay. Yes. But you need to ensure that it doesn't end up becoming a challenge mm. that it is the taxman who his collection mm. which cause you to get out of business mm. and how does that happen it means that a point reaches when you have to register the business mm. a point reaches when you need to file those taxes mm. a point reaches when you need to get the help of a profession yeah. to help you on this journey there are many tax professionals who are out there now even for a small business you need to make sure that that journey is made and the moment you say i want 
get the advice of an accountant about taxes, mm. you may find that you get a tax bill which you also say, but I don't have this money, mm. and it is true. Yeah. It is true. But the point is that if you haven't put your house in order, yeah. the taxman looking at you from the outside who say this is what I think, and then it creates a problem. So it is important for any business which is which is keen to grow. There is a point which is when you, when you say, I need to make sure my registration is in order. A lot of work has been done by the URA, uh, URSBs that the, the, that, that the registration is done. Uh, have I got a mighty number? Am I filing my taxes? That process there has to happen. And for the businesses which cross over to that level, you find that they can be able to grow even within the environment. But it's very difficult to continue doing big business mm. and you are doing it in an informal structure. What usually happens is that you can do it for a while and then you find that you have been choked. In the, so the business out there, make sure you have gotten your registration done, you have gotten your books in order, and don't shy away from using professionals. Use the professionals. You call someone and say, you know what, I hear you're a tax accountant. What is the tax I have to pay? Hey. Then you say, show me your costs. Show me your, your, your income. What mm. has, what's the profit? Mm. You have to pay this part. Yes. And th this is what we are going to file. Mm. And the books can be able to support that. When you reach that level, then you can be able to grow your business. If you don't, it can become a bit of a problem. Beautiful. I have uh, a bit to Alex. He's from Kavira Maido. Mm. He's yes. saying, how did you go about acquiring the system that you have? Mm. He just wants a bit of... Uh, is a businessman who I think is also trying okay. to streamline his operations. Uh, after you know <coughs> the flyer level training, mm. which uh, emphasized you know uh, ICT mm. in the business, I looked for the person who can you know who can uh, uh, help me with the system. Mm. Then I came uh, across a friend, you know. We live within the, the same what? The community. Yeah, but initially I didn't know because I, 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 I knew his, his brother, mm. you know. I talked to, to him uh, about the need to, uh, to <coughs> have ICT in my business. Mm. He's called Tony. Um, he did a uh, uh, Bachelor of Science in Information Technology mm. and specializing in software engineering. Mm. In, in, from India. Mm. He's also a teacher, he's good, you know, he, he can customize any business you have, mm -hmm. you know. So if that person need, need him, of course I will share my You'll number. You'll share your number yes. at the end of the show. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good one. He yes. found a, a solution from within the community. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we look a little far. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, still talking about uh, technology, mm -hmm. uh, Ronald, I think you'll pick this one. He's saying, I'm Ntuma Gideon, founder of Cyber Host Space. Mm. How do you scale a business across borders? I've tried to extend my digital marketing services to Rwanda, but it's been so hard. Can you advise? Yeah, I think I think scaling a business uh, across borders, as uh, as he has rightly mentioned, can uh, can be pretty challenging, mm. and for various reasons. Uh, a bit of it may be the legal environment in those new countries. Uh, it may be just even the contact of who is the person on the ground for you mm. I, I, in that business. Mm. I think one of the interesting ways when you want to scale a business beyond borders is to ask yourself, first of all, the product which I, or the product or service which I am offering. Locally, have I managed to offer it and optimize it? Mm. If I've optimized it, are there some customers locally who also operate in the other country. Mm. So do you have a customer here in Uganda who is also in Kenya? Mm. If you have a customer who is here in Uganda and in Kenya, that's the first person you go to and say, can I supply you this service, mm. even in what? Mm. In Kenya. And that person can help you create a network. You said you have some friends here in Kenya mm. who may be who may appreciate such a service. So you have to ask yourself, in your current customer base mm. as an IT company, you look around and say, these customers are happy with me. Mm. Then say, do you operate in Rwanda? If they say yes, that they operate in Rwanda, can I take this to Rwanda? Then yes. says, but Rwanda is a different market. Mm. I, I wouldn't want it like this. I would want it like this. Say, no, don't worry. I can be able to customize it mm. to this. Sometimes even the language is changing. Someone yes. is talking about a website. Mm. Says, but me, my website, I want it in Kenya, Rwanda. Yeah. Now, if, if that's the case, say that, no, I can be able to do that. Mm. And that person can give you 
a step into that mm -hmm. new market. Uh, then, uh, so you need to ask yourself in my current network, so that you are not cold calling. Uh, co co cold calling is very challenging. When mm -hmm. you say I'm here from Uganda, I do IT. It may be, but if you have someone who can ease you into that mm -hmm. environment, mm -hmm. that's a good starting point. Beautiful, beautiful. Now, Alex, this is for you. I'm Martin Adien, following this beautiful, productive, and inspiring show from Barara. My question to Alex, how did you manage the constant demands of, how did he manage the constant demands of his families, relatives and in-laws. They are first enemies of business progress. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, that's uh, a very important question. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, uh, I don't have so many dependent. Mm -hmm. hmm? I don't have so many dependent. Mm. Um, my wife have uh, started her a business. Now she's, uh, she's handling uh, are things mm. around. Mm? My brothers, all of them, they are working, except the one that uh, that's managing the, the other literary shop. Um, my parents, they are not, you know, they, they are somehow, they mm. can help themselves. So I, I have no so dependents. In-laws? In-laws, in-laws. Uh, Debaco? I have, I have <laughs> Debacos. Mm? I help them, but you know I don't bring them into my business. You ha you've set principles. Yes, mm -hmm. I can't bring them into my business. Mm -hmm. When there is a, a need, uh, of course I intervene. I help them, but I don't. I don't bring them into my business. Great. Uh, a bit related to that, but somehow touching mm -hmm. dates. Uh, this is Alex. Alex is from Kabar. He's saying, "How does sorry? This is it's called Parison. Uh, is from Kabar. He's saying, "How does Alex manage dates?" and balancing the family members. I think you've touched that. Mm. How do you manage dates, or we could mm. say credit, yes. uh, all those, those obligations? How do you manage? Because it's a challenge for a number of business people. Mm. Yes. Uh, for me, you know, I normally, uh, I normally give out, you know, mm. you know, uh, small, you know, credit which are manageable. You know, they, they, are, they are credit which are, even if someone fails to pay, you mm -hmm. can manage, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So th that's how I, I manage, you know, cr cr credit. Okay. Mm -hmm. That I, 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 I give uh, which I can manage even if someone what fail to pay. Yes. That's how I manage credit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. well, well, I think, Alex, you might also possibly talk to the ones where you are the one who has received the credit. Yes. Uh, I don't know whether that was a bit I think, yeah, question. there's that bit, but then there's where the you get uh, credit yeah. from the bank. Uh, uh, credit from the suppliers. But then also the credit from the bank, mm. yes. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Uh, as I told you initially that we are, have acquired so many loans mm. from the bank. Mm. But when you have a, a you know, you know, learning business, yes, mm? Mm. the cash flows are good, mm. Things to do is paying uh, loans. It mm. becomes very easy. Mm. Mm? I have three businesses. Yes. Mm. In, I have uh, a, size, a sizable family. Mm. You know, I'm not luxurious. Even at this mm. time, I don't have my own mm. my, my own car. You know, and you're not the, 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 the ambitions the, of the, getting the, another the car. Way. I have it's for delivery. Oh, mm. you interesting. Know? Mm. So my costs are not too much. Mm. Mm? Mm. With these three businesses, I can you know. Happy to pay your loan obligation. Lo loan obligation very very easily. So for me, issue to do is loans. Mm. Very simple. On and my I think side. It also comes for me, I don't day. create those you know unnecessary credit mm. costs. Yeah. You know, I don't create. I hear you. Mm. And the discipline to service them yes. when you take them. Yes. Uh, uh, let, let me just touch. I think what mm. uh, I think Alex raises a very important issue, which is critical for mm. the viewers to uh, to to kind of uh, pick up. Yes. It is if. Usually when banks are lending you money, yeah. they evaluate that business. Mm -hmm. Now with the exception of things like COVID, which no one would have anticipated, mm -hmm. banks usually have a very good picture of whether your business can work. Yeah. So it means if they give Alex money to buy, uh, to, 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 to support him as, a, uh, as working capital, and he does that, mm -hmm. Those are the cash flows he's talking about. Mm. That process will be able to what to to work. Yes. Now the trouble comes, and I think that's the point which I wanted to emphasize, that when you start picking from that money and diverting the loan, it was for working capital, but you buy a plot of land. Mm. It was for working capital, 
but you buy a luxurious vehicle, the one which Alex doesn't yeah. have. The moment that happens, then repayment of the loans becomes, becomes a problem. Right. When repayment of the loans becomes a problem, you find that relationships become a problem. Mm. Because your suppliers who said, I have a good person in Namasuba, they start saying, no, that's a very bad person. <laughs> they tell everyone, that mm. one is very bad. Mm. Even the suppliers who don't know, they say. Mm. So that's, that's, that, that's, that, that, that's what is critical. Yeah. That uh, th there are circumstances where businesses, and you actually are unable to pay. And when that happens, actually even the financial institutions will know. I mean, like COVID, what goes schools wrong? have been closed. Yes. You can't expect it, because the model can't work when ch children are coming to school. Mm. But the point is that when it is, most of the times, if you do what you said you would do, the business can be able to grow. And that's what the bank expects from you. That's what your suppliers expect from you. I get you. Now, I have uh, someone. Uh, he's called Mogonza Moses. Mm. He's a student at Makere. He's mm. saying, what factors did you consider to decide what to deal in mm. uh, when you're starting? Why did you choose to do business X and not Y? Mm. It's a good question. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, uh, I chose uh, a tailor shop because uh, t it deals with essential goods, mm. things which are demanded on a daily basis. Even if, uh, even if you don't, even, even if you are poor, of course you can't fail to, to eat. Hmm? Yes. Things yes. to do, you you have to buy shop. That's right. Hmm? You have to buy sugar on a daily basis. Mm. So for me, I looked at in. Uh, in such in such in such a way i hear you mm -hmm. then i have uh he's calling himself willox banks he's saying how did you manage school and business at the start at the start um i had uh, i had a friend called ronald uh he was a dropout of course uh, <coughs> he helped me uh when i was not around when i was at the university mm -hmm. but uh, later he used to abandon the the business to go and play football, you know, he, he, he was <laughs> a football fanatic. So when I learned about it, of course, I had to, to get another person and mm. replaced him with a young, a young guy. Uh, energetic and more focused. Yes, called, uh, <laughs> called Junior. And yeah. he, also Junior used to bring his friends <laughs> and, he, and <laughs> eat free things from the shop. Yes. yes. So when I learned about it, I had to change him. Yes. Then I got um, a young lady mm. who really uh, uh, did a tremendous job until when I finished the university. I hear you. Yes. Now I have Florence here. Mm. He's saying, what course did Alex take at Enterprise Uganda? Of course, she's also asking who provided the computer system, but you already mentioned that. Mm. Maybe you can speak to the course mm. or the kind of training you received from Enterprise Uganda. Um, uh, first, uh, it was... Uh, uh, 2000, 2014. Mm. Uh, 2014. Yes, yeah. that is a startup too. Yeah. That that uh, that uh, that uh, of course uh, really emphasizes uh, the attitude change, mm. 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 attitude change, uh, breaking the, the excuses why you don't mm. start businesses. Mm. Uh, the five givers of mm. how do you handle them? How do you treat them? Mm. You know. Uh, how do you organize your businesses? Mm. It's all about that. Mm. Mm. Uh, I, I don't know whether you, mm. you still have yes. such, you know, mm. Uh, mm. such a uh, mm. uh, workshop. Mm. 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 Okay. And another, another workshop was um, uh, flyer, fl 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 flyer, fl fl I flyer. Mm -hmm. uh, this one is uh, uh, about uh, business expansion mm. eh? and growth. Mm. Uh, um, which deals uh, with uh, five pillars, you know, of the business mm. Mm, because it tells so many things. Mm. Mm. Yes. Great. Mm. I have someone, uh, one of our Aden viewers uh, from Arusha, is saying, "Good afternoon, good people. I missed you, and now I'm following from Arusha, uh, Tanzania. That is Jamiro Martin. Mm. He has really spoken to that. I don't know what you can say about that." Um, mm. Ronald, because uh, that question is loaded mm. and it's very important, especially for people, because we know most of the people who run these retail operations, especially, mm. have other commitments. Mm. Maybe they have an eight to five. Mm. They're not just students, but they want to be there. Mm. I don't know. And I think I mm. saw the decisiveness mm. with which Alex handled 
mm. his first employees at yes. that particular moment. Yes. But those are typical issues. The ruler and the junior. Huh? Yes, I don't know what you can speak to that. About. No, I think I think it's a powerful. Uh, many people are running businesses as absentee managers. Mm. So uh, it's it's true in agriculture. It's true in retail. Uh, you you have that shop and you are not there uh, as a person, and that's why systems come to play. Mm. I think one of the things which is critical mm. is to make sure that you don't forget that that is a business like any other. Yes. It means that the business rules apply to it. Mm. Like this junior who they talked about who is bringing friends to eat mm. stock. If you don't stop that, you cooked. You, you, it's over. Mm. That, that business has to collapse. Mm. The Ronald who as soon as uh, Alex leaves, also he goes and plays football. Mm. If you don't stop that, mm. the business won't work. Yes. So you need to make sure that you understand who is the person I'm looking for to run this business, mm. and you make sure you execute mm. the things which go about, which go along with making sure that business is run right. Mm. So if you have to let go of people, mm. if you have to make sure that people are paid, you know, sometimes, uh, and, and this is true also in family businesses, mm. people employ people and they don't know whether they are really employees yes. or they are just friends. Yes. And how do you know you are a real employee? When your salary comes at the end of the month. Yes. But if you haven't paid the person in your shop, for the last three months, chances yes. are high yes. that he's paying himself using the stock. That's and right. you have to make sure you, you will be the one who pays for that. At so the end of the day. It, that business needs to be run. At Enterprise Uganda, we have a, a whole program which we just which is just dedicated to absentee business owners okay. and how to make sure you oversee mm. that business. And, and, and we encourage you, uh, we sometimes put it on the Facebook page and follow some of the the Twitter pages and others, the, 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 some of these programs are announced there. Yes. But the, it's important that you actually for, remember that you being an absentee doesn't take away the fact that this is a real business which you need to run like a true manager. Beautiful. And uh, before I leave you, uh, Ronald, um, I want you to again emphasize, I have about 10 people asking, one, how did uh, Alex get a certificate? Mm. What does it take to get a certificate from Enterprise Uganda? Mm. Again, just remind you that this show is brought to you by Enterprise Uganda, and maybe mention to them how they can get in touch with Enterprise Uganda. Yeah, I think uh, so. The, some of the programs which Alex talked uh, talked about, uh, the best startup tool. That's mm. our startup tool. Mm. He articulated it perfectly well. Mm. It is. Uh, developing an entrepreneurial mindset, having initiative to start, that's what BEST is about. Yeah. We have the high flyers where we talk about uh, largely the, the five pillars of business. Mm -hmm. That is more of a management tool. So a bit of Alex now had moved away from starting, now it's a management tool. We have the entrepreneurship training workshop, which is the ETW, specifically for high growth businesses, uh, how to make sure you are looking at the entrepreneurial competences, which you need to be able to expand your business and a number of specialized programs like the absentee landlord, uh, absentee manager businesses. All those, uh, we have some which are specialized like ABET for agribusiness, entrepreneurship training. So there are a number. So you can look for us on our website. You can look at the Enterprise Uganda website. Mm -hmm. We have a Facebook page. It's Enterprise Uganda, a Twitter mm -hmm. uh, page, which is also Enterprise UG. Uh, you can be able to follow us there. And our offices along Lumumba Avenue uh, take any time. We do a lot of work around the country, so you may meet us in one of the engagements. But reach out, send us an email, uh, send us, um, send us, just, j j just give us a call, so that we can be able to engage. You can find that on our website. The details of that. We 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 believe that. SMEs are the bedrock of this country, right. and every time Alex's story is is replicated in every district, in every sub county, in every parish, that is the only way jobs can be created. Beautiful. So we need more Alexes out there, and as an organisation, we are keen to make sure that happens. Beautiful, yeah. Alex. You're going to share your contacts mm -hmm. and probably tell our viewers what your last word is, especially speaking to the young people. Uh, my number is zero seven five five. 850371. You can repeat that for those who could have missed it. 0755 850371. And MTN is 0775850371. Exactly. Yes. What would be your last word, especially to the youth watching uh, us? To the youth outside there, you start from what, from what you have and from where you are. Uh, the things of uh, thing that uh, I need to have a lot of money, that time 
will never come in life. Yeah. That perfect moment that you have everything on your fingertips to start, it won't, it won't be there in life. Mm -hmm. You start with the little you have from where you are. <coughs> of course, you, you go somewhere. Great. Mm -hmm. Start where you are. Uh, I'm afraid, gentlemen, we've run out of time. Uh, but definitely, I've seen quite a number of questions coming in from our viewers. They were quite attentive. And uh, I need to promise you, myself and Ronald and Charles will sit down and see how we're going to unpack some of these questions. And probably, if need be, maybe we can bring back Alex. Because I've seen the kind of interest that this has generated. It's been the Business Express show, and today we're looking at how you transition from retail to wholesale. In other words, grow and succeed at retail business. I've been your host, Charles Boji. My guests in the studio was Alex Bale, a retailer, wholesaler, and actually I would say businessman. And Ronald Mukasa, our coach from Enterprise Uganda. Until next time, have a good day.